See their team take on the Indianapolis Colts, and even the naysayers were rewarded. Well, see, that, that came all about from the preseason, and we were looking like crap and, and things like that. We knew what we were going to do. We know what we're capable of. The people that are doubters, please, go, go find another team, do something like that, because we don't have time for doubters. If you want to be a part of the Buffalo Bills, have confidence and faith in us, and we're going to come through in the end. All right. Hello again. I'm Ed Kilgore, and welcome to another season of Sports Extra. And we begin on a positive note as the Bills whipped the Indianapolis Colts 26-10. to 10. It was a game that really wasn't as one-sided as the final score, but uh, tell you what, considering the lack of playing time for a lot of the veterans in preseason, a very solid performance in all phases. Now, based on today's game, let's have a little fun here. I know it's early. What do you think? You think as well as the 78,899 fans on hand by opening the game with a no-huddle offense, Jim Kelly hits McKellar for 20 yards, and then Don Smith for 9 as the Bills drive from their own 11 to the Colts' 13-yard line. The Colts call timeout there befuddled, but then the Bills kind of goof up as Thurman Thomas, who had only a couple rusty moments in this one, does botch the pitch and the drive stalls. So Scott Norwood, who would hit 4 of 6, comes on and nails the 29-yarder, and the Bills have a 3 to nothing lead. Now, that no-huddle offense certainly caught the Bills fans by surprise, but how about it? Did it really surprise the Colts? Mike DeGeorge has more on that. The Bills haven't gone to a huddle yet. They keep coming right back to the line of scrimmage. The Bills joined a growing trend around the NFL. It's called the no-huddle offense, first used by the Cincinnati Bengals in the late 1980s. Now, what made the no-huddle so effective today was it caught everyone off guard, including the Colts. That caught us by surprise, but I don't think it ca caught us ill-prepared because we, we handled that in a speed situation. We played Cincinnati last year, and they handled it there, so it's, and we've seen it before. The Bills say they first thought of going to the idea after Jim Kelly had been so effective in last year's playoff game against Cleveland using a hurry-up offense. You get to the line of scrimmage, you wait for a moment, you, Jim scans the defense, and then he calls the play. And evidently, Kelly called all the right plays in that first drive, going nine for nine using five different receivers. It's something that uh, you haven't seen very much before, but, uh, you know, Ted has confidence in me, has confidence in the receivers that I have and the offensive line, so uh, probably won't be the last time I see it, hopefully not. But. And, of course, the most ironic part of the Bills using the no-huddle offense is how Marv Levy protested when the Bengals used it back in the 1988 AFC Championship game. So we'll do it from time to time, but it's not going to be our... Our, our method of operating all the time. Mike DeGeorge, Sports Extra. All right, well, coming into this game, opinions kind of varied on Colts rookie quarterback Jeff George. A lot of people thought he was overrated as a top pick. Well, he erased a lot of doubts in his NFL debut today. He was very cool under pressure. His quick release uh, finds Jesse Hester here for 25 yards on the Colts. First possession is that Leonard Smith misses the tackle. He would later nail some people, though. Uh, the Bills finally stiffen, though, on third and goal from the two-yard line. Some good hits by that interior side of the line, and the Colts settle for a Dean Piasucci field goal to tie it at three. In the second quarter, though, uh, the Bills' defense and special teams able to come up with some big plays. Now, Bruce Smith will wind up sacking George. Now, watch here as Bruce goes for the football. He forces the fumble. Leon Seals recovers at the 22, and Bruce says this is something he's working on this season. It was on purpose. I'm con more conscious of that this year when I'm getting back there on the quarterback. I want to wrap that arm around him, and it'll force him to drop the ball, and uh, that was my main objective. All right, the Bills take advantage as Kelly hits the touchdown, man. Butch Roll from three yards out, and it's 10-3. Kelly, incidentally, 14-14 at one point. Then Darrell Talley, ready to go despite the recent knee surgery, moves in from the right side, even though he's almost tackled there by the offensive lineman. It's a sack on George, and then rookie J.D. Williams makes a huge play. He blocks the John Stark punt deep in Colts territory. Marv Levy says the Bills work with Williams on this situation. You gotta want to do it, you know. Just you can't be afraid of the ball or anything. You just gotta go out and try to get it. We, we kept James out after practice three or four times during the week, working on blocking it and his technique, and have it pay off the first time he's in there is tremendously gratifying. It. Well, this is not the first time Williams has done that. He blocked 10 of them last year in college. Well, it looked like the Bills would have another quick six. Kelly is on the mark. As a matter of fact, he finished 28 of 37 for 283 yards, a touchdown, and no interception. It really should have been two touchdowns, but Don Beebe drops the perfect strike in the end zone. Nobody felt worse about it than Don after the game. 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was like the Red Sea just partying. I mean, it was just <laughs> wide open, and all of a sudden it just, you know, it was on me so quick that, you know, but, uh, you know, it was a great pass by Jim, and I should have caught it, but uh, I'll get the next one. I'm not worried about okay. it. Once again, the Bills call on Norwood. His 32-yarder makes it 13-3. to And then Jeff Wright, with a very quick move, sacks George to stop the Colts and give the Bills another shot. Now, 12 seconds left, no timeouts at the 20, so the Bills play it safe, and as far as I'm concerned, smart. They take the Norwood field goal from the 37, so the Bills have a 16-3 to lead at the half. But I tell you what, the game far from over at this point. Uh, George came out in the second half and looked like a 10-year veteran on the Colts' first possession of the second half. The Bills really coming after him. He gets a little help here. Watch the great one-hand grab by Billy Brooks. This play covers 21 yards. Sensational catch here. Then third and 19, and George throws a perfect strike to Stanley Morgan over J.D. Williams. It covers 25 yards and makes it 16 to 10. He's a quarterback. He's a quick release. Uh, it's too bad he, he got knocked out. It would have been interesting, but uh, you know he's a, he's a good player. He's going to be around for a long time. Early in the fourth quarter, after the Bills miss a field goal, the Colts threaten to take the lead, but Kirby Jackson breaks up a third down, a pass, and then Biasucci misses the chip shot, and the Colts come up empty. It's still 16 to 10 Bills. Now, if that Biasucci miss wasn't big, what happened after that was a Thurman Thomas fumble gives the Colts the ball in great field position with about 12 minutes to go, and then Cornelius Bennett, he now wears number 97, that's his old Alabama number, and he blitzed, and then he drops George heavily to the turf. George suffers a concussion, and he is finished for the day. Well, you know, quite naturally, you know, nobody blocked me, you know, I put a good move on the guy upfield. He came back up under, nobody touched me, it was just, you know, I was, you know, running fa you know, as fast as I could, and got a you know, good clean lick on him. I didn't try to hurt the guy, you know, right away I went to see was he all right, and uh, those things just happened. All right, so the Bills go to work on offense again. Kelly to McKellar again. Another great grab, and this sets up a Norwood 47-yarder. This was a huge kick because he had missed a pair from 44 yards out, and that's 19-10. Then Jack Trudeau, who has hurt the Bills in the past, intercepted by Mark Kelso with about five minutes to go. Now, it seems like Thurman Thomas is just about warming up now. Uh, the Bills' offensive line, minus Will Wolford, had to sit out with a hamstring pull. They begin opening some holes. Rookie Glenn Parker and John Davis do a terrific jobs along with Richard Hull and Ballard. Now Thurman goes 29 yards. Watch the move right here. Whoa! And this will set up a five-yard touchdown by Thurman, who again makes a nifty little cut back inside. Thurman finishes with 84 yards on 20 carries. And hey, who needs preseason? He knew he'd be busy. Throughout the week, you know, they said they were going to go to me, so I was prepared. I was ready to go. Uh, you know, I got a little winded there in the first quarter because I haven't, you know, haven't been involved in, in training camp and things like that. But as the game went on, I got better and better at understanding things on how to get rest.